God will be. That sounds like home to me. I think that's why like we're all that. here, is, isn't it? I like that. We're here for that. Yeah. I don't know about the rest of you, but I feel like I've been through a lot of heart surgery the last few days. Has it? Have any of you felt it? <laughs> Some major topics that are being covered, but we need these major topics. Amen. We need to be prepared because if nothing that the earth, the world, the governments have shown us more than anything these past few years is that everything is changing. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing prophecy begin to to fall into place. And we're seeing how it's being fulfilled. And you're going to be talking about the time of trouble. Yeah. You know, I, I for years, I always wished that the Lord could just somehow just take that out of the equation, you know? Yeah. But the good news is by His grace Amen. and His strength, His people will Amen. go through that time. Amen. So where we can, if yeah. you'd like, you may kneel with us as we pray. Amen. Most gracious Heavenly Father, as we bow before you this Sabbath afternoon, mm. Lord, we realize that we are in changing times throughout this world. Mm -hmm. We see that things are drawing close, ever so close for your second return. And Father, we want to be prepared. Mm -hmm. We want to understand how to prepare for that great time of trouble. Mm. So Lord, I lift up Pastor Kenny to you right now. I just pray that your Holy Spirit will come in and anoint his heart, anoint his mind, anoint his tongue with the power from on heaven. And may we who are listening have ears to hear Mm. and hearts to feel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sweetie. Oh, thank you. It's nice to have a good help meet, isn't it? I mean, what a blessing. Yeah, she's always holding me up. It's certainly in prayer. All right, praise God. I know you're having a good time here at camp meeting. We're supposed to have a good time in the Lord. And uh, we pray for the conviction and the power of the Holy Spirit to continue to fall upon us. We need that power of the Holy Spirit. We need to draw closer to Jesus, and we need to hear the messages that have been hearing. You know, they're really challenging us, aren't they, in the day that we're living in. We're going to talk about the time of trouble in earth's final crises. You know, if you're going to pick a subject, you might want to pick something a little bit different maybe, but this is a little bit difficult, a little bit hard, but we want to try to get through as much as we possibly can today. There'll be difference of opinion. We understand that. There's a lot of things that's going to take place before Jesus comes. But the main thing is always is we want to be what? You've heard it, can't be ready. Be ready. But we'll see these things. And I think with the events of vital importance are taking place all around us. And our constitution is being challenged. The Bible is being challenged. Our religious rights are being challenged. Everything it seems like that's right is being challenged right now. And how are we going to meet those challenges? It seems like some of these things that we hold in high esteem spiritually, they're on the chopping block. And they're being chopped, chopped, chopped. And we are afraid sometimes to say what we have on our heart and our mind anymore because it's not correct anymore. But I still feel like, you know, that we're, we're down home. And we need to say something that's plain and simple where God's people can understand it, where I can understand it. We're seeing a swinging pendulum, no matter how it swings. And it seems that both sides, as it were, and usually there's two sides to everything. As it swings back and forth towards a, a, maybe a conservative Christian. We're wanting more Christianity in the world, but yet both sides are saying we need something in common. We need a day of rest. We want to promote something that would be appropriate for everybody to, you know, join in. And they call that naturally legislation of a Sunday law. So we'll say things today, and it might be new to some of you. We're not trying to be offensive or ugly at all. But we are here because God has given us a message to give to the world. I think we can agree on that, can we not? You cannot give a three angels message and not talk about a Sunday law. You just can't do it. And so we have to sometimes mention these things that are up in the air. So what we say today or bring forward, we're not saying, oh, this is exactly what's going to happen. 
but we want you to think it over and do your own homework. I've studied on some of these things and done some homework on it, and I think it's worth us to really rethink the issues because we realize the Sunday law will be the main central issue, will it not be, in these final conflict in a time of trouble for the commandment-keeping people of God. So if you are a commandment keeper, you know, you might as well keep your head on straight right now because things are going to happen, and I believe they can happen rather quickly, and we'll, we'll prove that as we go along. Isaiah chapter 23, verse 8. I always love to say it, and I say, the Bible says. Come on, somebody. The Bible says. Isn't that right? (laughs) Isn't that what matters? The preacher said, so what? The evangelist said, so what? The Bible says. That's good. It says, who hath taken this counsel, Isaiah 23, 8, against Tyre, the crowning city whose merchants are princesses? Whose traffickers, you notice that? And that word there means peddlers. Look out. What are they peddling? Huh? Are the honorable of the earth. Or we say, Revelation 18, we say it's the great men of the earth. So something's going to happen when the great men supposedly of the earth are getting involved. Something big's going to happen. Something big's going to take place. Now, should we be concerned about that? Well, well I heard one little grunt. Or should we be concerned about the signs of the times and what's taking place in the world? Yes, we should. But most of us say, well, I don't know that I am or not. I love the book, The Great Controversy. I'm not ashamed of it. I believe everybody ought to have it. We ought to be reading it. Page 601 says this. Remember, notice, events of vital importance. Events of what? Vital importance are taking place all around us. We might ask somebody, are there any kind of vital things taking place around us? And some of us, even as Adventists, say, well, I'm not sure. We need to be sure that things are happening and taking place today. You've heard it over and over and over and over, and we need to hear it over and over. That is of vital importance to the people of God right now. They're going to affect you, and they're going to affect me. There's no doubt about it. They're taking place. In fact, we read strange events. So when somebody comes to me and says, this, this will never take place. Well, this can't happen. Oh, come on now. We are told strange events. We're told that there's going to be strange developments in the great controversy, page 608. Strange developments. Strange events. Now, what does that mean? Well, and again, why give a message like this? Couldn't we find something else to speak about? Could there be something else that might make you happy when you leave? Hopefully this will make you happy. Number one is, I don't think we need to go into a lot of detail. Why are we giving this message? It's because we've been told to give it. That's why. Isn't that right? It's not if you want to give it. If you've been a part of this and you have and you are, we need to be giving this kind of message to warn the world of what is soon to take place. Review and Herald 3, 9, and 11 says this. The Lord has enlightened, listen, the Lord has enlightened us in regard to what is coming. The people must not be left not knowing. Are we still there? What is before them and unprepared for these great issues that are coming? So I feel like with the good foundation that we have, that the Lord has given us the light. The Lord has given us the knowledge. He's given us prophecy that we can know what is to take place. And if we know these things, why aren't we telling everybody? Well, some of us are afraid to be, we might be a little bit embarrassed. Well, it may not happen just when we think it's going to happen. Well, we are told to give them and leave the results to God. God says, my people should not be left in darkness. They need to know, and I've given the light on these subjects, because there's great issues that are coming. Now, is anyone here possibly interested in these great events these things taking place oh absolutely oh, got one hand praise god i'm looking for two i'm like will there be two will there be three? Oh, somebody's waving now we got excited that's what we should do because some people say well you know i'm just not interested in that we need to be interested and let me just tell you why if you're not interested in things that are happening right now that's you know going to happen in the near near future let me tell you somebody that is interested The enemy is interested. He's looking at you. 
He's looking at me, seeing what he can do to hinder you from being in the service of God. Let me just read this. There are two testimonies, 117, 171 says this. Satan closely watches events. Come on, somebody. Satan does what? He closely watches events. Now, if he's closely watching events with all the mm, inside info he has, maybe I should be a little more careful. I need to watch the events too. So don't say it doesn't matter what's going on in the world, what's happening in the government, what's happening in the church. You're going to fool yourself. The enemy is watching and he's preparing, closely watching these events. Now, let me just put a little more foundation, a little more concrete When we worked in construction, we want a good footing. We need a good foundation. And let me tell you, Seventh-day Adventist has a good footing. They have a good foundation. The problem is too many of us are getting off of it. We've got to get back on it, okay? Is that okay? We've got to get back on this footing because it's firm, because it's right. Regardless if people are doing it or if they're not doing it, the message is true. It's right on target. God is leading and calling out of people. We realize this, the nine testimonies, 11 says this, and see if you think it's just true. The unsettled state of society. It starts out, the unsettled what? State of society. Have you ever seen anything like it? Now we can go over the same thing. You know that it's unsettling. You know that something is not right. That should tell you that something big and decisive is soon to take place. Rather than just sit back and say, oh, well, that's just something else strange, something else that's weird, something else that we can't explain. These are things that are opening up. It said, approaching events of the greatest magnitude. Notice this. Men possessed and thinking of demons are taking the lives of men and women and children. Are you still there? Do you see it? It's all kind of things you just can't explain why they're going by doing what they're doing to innocent people. Why go by, you know, riding your bike as it were down the road and you push some elderly person down on the road. Well, what's going on here? The demons, that's what it is, demons. And then it, ends, it says the enemy has succeeded in perverting justice. Is that true? Do you see any justice? No justice in this life. I've been told that all my life. If you're looking for justice, don't look here. The day will come. Maybe not in this life. And then I found something in the great controversy, so I don't have to say. It's political, it's it's moral, whatever it is. You just think about it yourself in page 592. It says, political corruption is destroying a love for justice and for the truth. So that made me set up and take gander, look at it. It's destroying truth. We find that things are happening in the world, the corruption in the world. People are... He can't figure out what maybe is truth. And, of course, Isaiah 59 says, you know, we talked about justice and truth and honesty and everything. It's falling in the streets. People are stepping all over it. So I'm just saying, these are things that let us know that something big is about to happen. The world is stirred with a spirit of war. Everybody seems to be against everybody else. And we can read that in 9 Testimonies 14. It says the 11th chapter of Daniel is almost completely fulfilled. Man, that'd be, that'd be lights out, wouldn't it, once that's all done? That tells us how close we are. We look at prophecy. We look at the seven churches. We look at where we're at in stream of time. There's not much left. And then we see these things, these events that are happening, taking place. It's scary almost. Satan is delighted. There's no doubt about it. To see things happening in the world today because he's the author of it. But let me tell you, he is a diligent Bible student. And we're going to have to, by the grace of God, be diligent Bible students, right? And trying to find the truth, not a counterfeit like he does. He learns what is real, what is truth, and then he puts his little counterfeit out there to fool us. We have to know what truth is. Solemn events connected with the close of probation that we need to watch closely. Read more of the great controversy, page 310. Did you get that? We're talking solemn events connected with the close of what? With the close of probation. Somehow that should make us stand up and rethink maybe our life and where we're headed and what's going on in our life. Are we just here for a good time and 
Aren't we just here, be, you know, trying to make a living and, uh, you know, wh- what are we here for, really? What has God called you from and to? He's called us, right, to give a message, a specific message that will never be popular, that people's not going to like you when you really give it. And you know what? I think that stops some of us sometimes from giving what we should. We don't want to offend. We don't want to hurt. And naturally, that's true. You don't want to. But who are you going to offend, man, or are you going to offend God? You see, we have to be careful. He says to give it, we need to give it by the grace of God. It seems like to me when we talk about a time of trouble and Earth's final crisis, it could go in a lot of different places. But it seems to me there's a centralized, there's a combined effort and, and, the, and people trying to attempt to change our life, to change our social, you know, the way that we conduct ourselves and try to change our way we behave in our society. Why are they planting these kind of seeds? Several groups they put together, and I'm sure they get a big paycheck for it. You know, putting things together. They're trying to, you know, come up with effective ways to build a better world. But you can't build a better world without the Word of God in it as a foundation. But they want it without the Word of God. They want it without any kind of foundation. And it can't, it's an impossibility for it to happen. But the Bible says the great men of the earth are involved. We have to rethink about that, right? The merchants the traffickers the Bible talks about, the honorable, huh? But, you know, we look now, these great men, as it were, of the earth, they are affecting our freedoms and our religious liberties right now. And some of us should be outraged to the point that we speak up, that we print, that we talk, that we put it on TV, we put it on radio, We stand up when our religious liberty and all is affected. We have to stand up for what is truth and what is right before it's too late. Much more Bible prophecy talks about how many times have you read the Constitution is going to be changed? What what are you waiting for? What am I waiting for? It's already been changed, not the wording. They haven't taken a match and, and burn it yet. But notice how they've worked around everything. Have you noticed that? They've worked around the Constitution. They've worked around. They've rejected it. They've abandoned it, as it were. They've given up on it. And it could have said that merchants were the great men of the earth. There has to be a question mark there for me. For by their sorceries were their nations deceived. Now, notice these merchants, they buy at a discount. Somebody's come on now. Spiritually, they're buying at a discount and then they're selling for higher prices, the soul. You've got to watch them. I've got to stay, pay close attention to these things that are going on. It's something I wanted to share with you as we go. The time of trouble and earth's final crisis is certainly going to be brought about by strange events, things that we just can't quite understand, something that's developing great issues. And we read in wars and rumors of wars and all these things and money problems and disasters on every hand. Do we not see those things? And then what do they do to us when we see them? What does it make you think about? What does it make me think about? The end? Or just we hope they get over with and we we can go on? People are saying and doing strange things. Behavior. It's awesome. One man, I think you've read about this, and I'm sure you had. He's a, uh, this was just a few months ago, Jesuit priest. He's a a notorious pro-LGBT member, and he's promoting an image or a drawing. Now listen carefully. Showing Jesus Christ as a homosexual. Now you talk about blasphemy. You talk about, I'm getting some goosebumps on the back of my neck right now. Did you get it? And you know what? He's getting away with it. Because a lot of times we sit by, we say nothing, and just let them get away with it. He's, he's promoting a cause, if you know what I mean. And then he goes on, he's, he describes as viewing God as a male, as damaging. Hmm. This priest is working, notice this, 
on it, how to implement the blessings of homosexual couples and even the desire to implement homosexual marriage. I thought, how interesting, a couple of men. And then I find something just a couple of weeks ago that said this. Pope Francis is attempting to draw a distinction. Come on, somebody. Between, notice this, blessing and official homosexual union or marriage and a homosexual couple. Did you see that? He's going to come up with some kind of something and millions will say, well, I guess it's okay. The Pope said it. Well, I don't agree. Isn't that interesting? What's going on here right before our very eyes? Do you think, you, some of these things you think just can't be? Let me just share a couple of things quickly. I, I think it's, it's, it's interesting. You may not enjoy the story, but I'm going to, I want to relay it to you anyway. This can't happen in this country, right? You're saying, this can't happen. These things are not going to happen. We have more sense. We're not living in the dark ages anymore, right? We're not barbaric anymore, really. It's not been that long ago that Leonard... Leonard was 15 years old, and he lived in the state of California. And the people in California decided that he shouldn't have any children. They threatened to lock him up and force him to do hard labor if he didn't submit to sterilization. Somebody still with me now? Under a movement, as you well know, if you study and do some homework of eugenics, now, for Sir Francis Gallatin is about 18-something, 1890, 1883, developed this. It was running, listen, it was running in its peak here in the United States in the 1930s. It seemed like, well, we should have more sense in the 30s, right, 1930s. But it was running in its peak, and you find out that if you had a physical disability, any kind of mental disability, they said... Or any other thing that was they called a disability, you weren't allowed to have. Genetically, you were defective. And so they, in the United States, what they recorded, over 60,000 people were sterilized. Yeah, forcibly sterilized by the state-run program. In other words, it was, right, it was made, the state, people had to vote on it. And they did that. If you're thinking, well, there's no Sunday laws, there's not going to be any penalties, not going to be. you need to think again. State-run programs through the 20th century. Now, you say, well, that's been a little while ago. In California, the eugenics law was enacted in 1909. The procedure was performed in different institutions. Notice, and the institutions did not have to have approval of the patients. They just did it. One of the youngest patients was an 11-year-old. Somebody needs to listen. 31 states this was okay to do, including Washington, D.C. Interesting. Now, you might say, that's a long time ago, so those kind of things don't take place anymore. California repealed its eugenics law in 1979. Are you still with me? Things were happening. And 2010, they repealed it in the state prisons. 2010. They could still do that. And it was in 1981 was the last time the state of Oregon performed their last forced sterilization. See, how many really, you think about how many really knew that? How many really heard this stuff? Is it out there for us to say what we're doing to the people? We could want to make the perfect race. Huh. We know global organizations around the world today are working on a permanent, global, controlled state of readiness. I hope you're with me. To fight the next pandemic that they call what? X. Somebody say X. They know it and they're claiming there's going to be another one like COVID-19 that's going to hit. And they're being prepared. You say, oh, now let's be careful. No, I'm not going to be careful. Is that all right? If you throw something up here, you better hit me with it. (laughs) Kenny, that means you. All right. You know what I'm talking about. This stuff is so very important right now. For instance, you say, well, I don't know who. The World Economic Forum is behind it. Listen to this. The World Bank is behind it. G7's behind it. G20's behind it. You know, we have to look at World Health Alliance is behind it. Are you still... They're in a state of readiness 
to make sure they have something to give when this disease X hits. And it'll be a matter of months and they've already went through and they found out and then they want to pass all the thing out and give everybody shots. How can you check anything out so quickly? You know what I'm saying? Just be careful. According to the Epic Times, you know, you, we've heard of this stuff. It comes out. It could be just around the corner and it come, come, come to the point. What they want it to be is that, uh, you know, we're, we've have everything we have has been reduced to nothing and they want you to be happy with that. You heard that? Own nothing and be happy. Well, we know the day will come for that right now. I don't know if I'll be happy or not. Check yourself out. We've heard of out and out criminal plan. Criminal plan of depopulation. I don't want nobody saying, well, no, we got to be. No, there's plenty of information out there. Do your homework over and over and over and over. Some people who give this information, they no longer exist. It's true. I'm not trying to scare. Them. This is the world that we live in. This is the last things that's happening before Jesus shall come. We've got these false pandemics has happened. These false vaccines. They got ways out there to uh, you try to destroy the immune system. Are you still with me? Yeah. And things that cause sterilization. They've got brain implants. Oh Lord, have mercy! If it was good, I'd stand in line. You know what I'm talking about. And all this AI business, all this sci-fi stuff. It seems like, but it's really not. It's in operation. It's going on right now. And we sat back like, no, that's not happening. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. They have ways now that they're trying to give you stuff that changes your DNA. Are you still with me? DNA, what, does it, what do you mean? That means it damages the cells. It can cause irregular behavior notice this bad behavior it causes the cells even to be toxic and subject to disease we have to be careful about the things we take into our body do we not part of the message that we have to get be careful with these things in fact a, a former representative of the vatican to, to the united states make he makes this statement he says some people in high positions referring to covid 19 they have falsified data on infections. They've doctored statistics. Are you with it? They've attributed many deaths to COVID, although they died of something else. Isn't that interesting? I think it's just interesting. That's what he says. You take it from there. I'm just simply saying strange. Did you get it? Great controversy. About strange things are going to develop. Strange things are going to happen before Jesus comes. What more... Ranger, can I say that things are going to happen? What more do you want to take place? Martians landing on this planet? Well, look out. We could see that in the form of demons from hell. Are you still with me? And I know a lot of people have talked about it, but I'm going to mention several things again. Because Now, again, it doesn't mean it will take place. Ever since in Adventism, since I was a little child, I kept hearing Sunday law. This is going to be cause of Sunday law. This will happen to be a Sunday law this way. But we need not let it pass by. Everything that comes by that hints of that, we need to sniff it out. Are you Sniff it out. Something's going on. Could it be? One of these days it will be. Is this the day? So the real danger, the problem facing this nation today, I'm just, I just want to, you think with me, might come through what is called Project 2025. Some speak against, some people, oh, let's not worry about it. I say go ahead and think about it. I say go ahead and read and study. I've done some of my homework on it. Are you still with it? I've done some of my homework on it. You see this up here? Uh. This is almost, this is a thousand pages. The project 2025 is over 900, about 900 pages. It's already typed out. It's already ready to go and ready to be implemented. And about stuck in the middle of it is a potential heavy duty Sunday law. I'll read it to you in a moment. It's ready to go right now. You need to keep that in mind. It's turned a lot of heads. And so you say, well, what is that? 
This is a presidential roadmap. 2025. Some heard somebody say yes, yeah, so you've done some homework. The roadmap for doing, notice this, comprehensive, concrete transition plans for all the federal agencies. Something big is about to take place. If, it's if God allows it. We're not sitting on, oh, this is it. But I'm saying to bury your head and say it's not going to happen. Don't do that. Because it's, listen, this 2025 is geared on four main pillars. And notice the four main pillars that the brains of this country, as it were, those who put it together. And I'll, I'll mention some of those in a moment. It's built on, number one, policy agenda or laws. First thing we want to do is we're going to pass a bunch of laws. You know how you try to pass laws for morality? You can't do that. And then number two, the second pillar is personal data, which is we're going to have the right people in the right place at the right time to implement this stuff. Well, if that be true, we need to pay attention. Number three, we're going to be training. We're going to do videos. We're going to be sending things around. And we're going to be using people in prior administrations, right? Workshops, videos, so we're all aware of what's going on so we can push together. And then, I've heard all my life that our last movements will be what? (laughs) Will be rapid ones. They have a 180-day plan to implement these laws. Imagine six months, they said, we're going to do this thing. And if there is something stuck in the middle of that, we need to be careful. It could happen rather quickly. So we need to think what's going on here. So we take action quickly on this workshop. Well, heads are spinning right now. And people are saying, wow. You might say, well, now, we don't know. Remember, it's already typed up. It's already written. And you have probably over, way over 100 of conservative organizations that is backing it up. Let me give you two or three of them right now. See if maybe it rings a bell to say, this may be, this may be true. Pushing forward and leading out is the Heritage Foundation. It's legitimate, isn't it? It's been around a long time. Alliance defending, notice this, defending our freedoms. Yeah. And how about Liberty University? Oh, they're involved, backing it up. Family Research Council. I'm telling you, some legitimate things. Organizations are backing this up. And they've been putting their minds to it for a long time now and getting it all together for just in case certain people come to power, boom, it's going to happen. The world is going to change before your very eyes. It's going to affect you as a seventh-day keeper. I'm telling you that right now. If it wasn't that, why would I be worried about it? It's going to affect you. It's going to affect me. Almost 900-page document here. Wow. The writers of this document says... It's a, no, it's conservative, but it's a unified effort to pull us all together, ready for the next who will come into power. Huh. And they say, we've got to get back to our roots. Isn't it kind of interesting? I saw a sign the other day, and it said something like this. I read it. I about had a wreck because of reading the sign. <laughs> First thing, word I saw was normal. Oh, And it said, normal is not coming back. But Jesus is. Oh, I tell you, I got excited about that. Normal's not coming back, but Jesus is coming back is what it said. Oh, that's good news to me. And now they're saying, let's get back to the normal. What is the normal? But here's the real problem with all of this. Just one little thing here is there's a Sunday law in the middle on page 589. And I'm going to read that to you in just a little bit here. A few minutes that we have left. Pray, kids. <laughs> Where we see that in, in America, they're going to use laws to support religious doctrine. We'll come back to that in just a minute. Wikipedia talks about Project 2025, a collection of policy proposals. Notice this, to reshape. The United States of America. What is it? And that little package could reshape America if God sees fit and allows it to go through. Are you still with me? 
Are you ready for the reshaping of it? Are you ready for these strict laws and rules that, you know, your, your freedoms and your religion? And I mean, we see it already, right? Freedom of speech. Do you really have it? No, no you don't have it. If you see somebody that's a little bit chubby, you can't say they're chubby anymore. In fact, if you say they're fat, they're liable to put, they're liable to put you in jail. I hope I made a point. Not that you want to, but my brother, you should be able to say it. You should be able to say it. it not that you do. I'm just saying you should. That's called free speech. It's not make up something else that most of us don't understand. I think you get it. It goes a lot of different ways. They want to reshape this country, and people are reshaping it already. 2025.org. Look some of this stuff up for yourself. Do your own research. I'll say it over and over. It says it's a unique opportunity for undoing the damage that has been done. And a lot of us like to undo some of the damage that's been done. And more that will be done. Just let me give you a few of the changes that's written in here, if you don't mind. Just a few of the changes. This all-important document, as it were, Project 2025, plans on cutting funding for the development of the, notice, of justice, DOJ. They're going to take apart the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, and the Department of Homeland Security. Oh, some changes They're cutting way back on climate change, regulations in favor of fossil fuel production, a lot of stuff. This is what's going on here. They're going to end the independence, notice this, for several federal agencies like the FCC. Wow. What? Some projects going on here. Everything that the government is involved with or we as a people are involved with, there's going to be some changes. Some's going to be good. Some's going to be bad. Time of trouble. Earth's final crisis. It's going to destroy our religious freedom. And let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, anytime we see something that destroys our religious freedom, we have an obligation to condemn any law or any policy that goes against the word of God. Amen. It's time we stood up. Quit sitting on our. Uh oh. Quit sitting down. <laughs> Every once in a while I have to readjust. <laughs> my tongue goes faster than my brain. But you know what? We get it. We get it. We have to get it. Anything that goes against the word of God. Notice this. Even in our constitution. In an attempt, notice this, in an attempt to impose any religious doctrine or practice or preference, we need to stand up and say no. No. Because it will come back to get you, it will bite you. Okay. Let's go back in time just a little bit. Where we see all of this, where is all this headed? Many have been involved over the years picking a day of rest, making it a law of the land. And many of them have no idea what they're doing until it's too late. Are you there with me? They have no idea what they're doing. Review and Herald, 1888, says the time is coming when the law of God, we know this, in a special sense, is to be made void in our land. Now what the Bible said? Psalms what? 119, 126. They made void the law. It's time for God to work. Notice this. The rulers of our nation will by legislative enactment enforce Sunday law. And thus God's people will be brought in great peril. If we are to be brought in great peril and we know that we are, what's going on here? We need to speak while we can. We need to get the message out while we can. Not just guard it and say, well, we need to be careful now. Say what you had to say. Amen. Right? Do what you have to do. Read the word of God and we've been commissioned to do it. And I tell you, if you're shut down, you're shut down. But no one can shut you down unless God says you're going to get shut. Is that okay? I'm getting so tired of this. Okay, I better let that go. Too much, we're worried about what man can do. Better be worried about what God's going to do. All right? Oh, I'm telling you, we need to do it. And I'm, I, I believe this. 
When we see these things happening, and we are seeing them happening right now, there's no doubt about it. We're told, that let not the commandment-keeping people of God be silent when we see these things take place. The prospect of losing your home and property and even thrown into prison is a possibility. But it's just said what? Let's wage war if necessary, a continual war. What? To preserve the law of God. None of us want to do that. We want everything to be quiet and nice and easy. But if there is a, we have to a war against this. We have to speak up against it. Yes, there will be consequences. Just ask Jesus about that. Amen. And, you know, look at all this. You think about what kind of a war am I going to wage against this? Oh, what are we going to do? As the world hits hard against the law of God, we are to hit hard back with the truth of God's word. There's no doubt about it. As, the, as it's downtrodden, as they try to cover it up and kick it up and despise the law of God, we are to lift it up. Yes. That's what God says to do. And he's going to bless us if we do that. Yeah. Wage a continuous war if necessary. History is going to be repeated. A false religion will be exalted. The first day of the week, a common working day. Are you still with me? Yeah. Possessing no sanctity whatsoever in the word of God will be set up as that image was at Babylon. You remember in, uh, what was it, Daniel 3? You remember that? Nebuchadnezzar and the golden image. See, are we really ready for that? We talk about it. We understand it. We've read it. We went through it. And we say, oh, yeah, we got it. Do we realize it's happening right before our very eyes right now? Well, the state will use its power to enforce these laws. Men will willingly engage in these movements. A great crisis is coming. By the great, uh, I think, General Conference Bulletin in the 4-13-1891 says this, Popery is to regain its lost supremacy. And that the fires of persecution will be rekindled through the time-serving conscience of the so-called Protestant world. Hello. Think about it. Through whom? Protestant world. And here we're rubbing foot and feet and what? And it's okay. We're to go out and try to win. But we need to be very careful what's soon to take place. When the laws of the, you know, we talk about a man exalted above the laws of God, there's going to be some problems. Here's some interesting facts quickly. Eight minutes. What happened? Who did what? I know it's not for you folks, but it's going to, I can't. In 1906, every state in the union, if you think this can't happen, blue laws, Sunday laws, you, I just want you to think again, please rethink the issues. If you see these events and things that are taking place and strange things, every state in the union except for California and uh, I think Idaho and Arizona had some form of Sunday blue laws. Are you still with me? And what were these blue laws? And what were they? Were they really enforced? These laws, when they were on the book, they could bring charges against you, criminal charges against you if they wanted to, and penalties for working on Sunday. Interesting. That 1906, the day most people says is the rest day. Hmm. Of course, except for they call Jews and Seventh-day Adventists. And these folks were regularly prosecuted. They were jailed. They were fined for secular labor on Sunday. Oh, listen. Some of you have seen that. I call it shocking. It was a picture in 1895 taken in Tennessee. There was eight Seventh-day Sabbath keepers. They were convicted working on Sunday, and they were on a chain gang with other convicted criminals, according to Liberty Magazine. Well, did you get it? Put them on a chain gang. Oh, that can't happen in the 1900s. Really? These stories are rare. You don't talk about them because we want to talk about religious freedom and ratification, you know, of our freedoms and what, 1791, several 200 years ago more. Ratification of the First Amendment. No, everything's good. And we're okay with today's religious, diverse society. Really? Blue laws. 
not only on the state level, but they wanted to raise them all up to the federal level. But notice how powerful lobby groups, National Reform Association, went forward. They were backed by a large group of Protestant denominations. Are you still? For a while it seemed it would pass, but it didn't. One man said this. I think he maybe have it right. He says, in America, if these laws are passed, America is not a Christian nation. It's not. But somehow we're headed in that direction. What are we going to do? Let me read a few minutes we have. Notice this. Being penalized for being a Sabbath keeper is not far-fetched. Project 2025 silently covered up on page 5, 589 in the part focused on reforming the Department of Labor. It's shocking. It's a proposal to use American laws to support religious doctrines. This is what's concerning, and it should be. What it will cause, what will happen to it, you just you read and you study for yourself. Here's how the section begins. So it's already in print. Are you still ready? It's ready to be implemented in about six months. Are you still with it? They say once it. They said God ordained the Sabbath Sunday. Listen, the Sunday has never been the Sabbath. I'm not mad about it. It's just like, come on. It's never been, the Bible never says it, it never has been and it never will be. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. We need to quit being so bashful about it and worry about somebody got hurt about it. Somebody should stand up and say, oh, praise God, I didn't know any difference. Don't be calling Sunday the Sabbath because it's not. Okay, I got that off my chest. Now, they call it, they say we need to have a, in, in, in here, as a day of rest, until, ever, until very recently, the Judeo-Christian, Judeo-Christian traditions sought to honor that mandate by moral and legal regulations of work on that day. And then, a few sentences on past that, it says, why a regular day off? Well, it's beneficial. Huh? And the purpose of it. And Congress should encourage communal rest. Who? Congress? By amending the fair labor standards and so on and so forth. And, and, and institute Sunday as a day of rest. Here it becomes very plain in this. America is for Christianity, but. America is for what? Christianity, but in Project 2025 embraces a particular type of Christianity. One that zeroes in on Sunday rest. This should come as no surprise to you or to me. We've heard about it for decades. Mama, you around? I knew she was close by. <laughs> Do you realize they're encouraging Congress? Mm-hmm. All right. this, this, this is in all of these things. Are you seeing? It's not something that's made up, something that may... They want to do it in the 180 days is what they say on here. Now, could it be? Could it something happen? Could it be? They're, they're, yes, they're saying right now, it, if, if they implement it, if they enforce it, yeah, it sure could be. Mm-hmm. Remember, we're a Christian nation, but we want Sunday as the day of rest. Mm-hmm. You, you read of 2020, 2025, 2030, right? The seven day, the papal, you know, it's all about mm-hmm. interesting Sunday rest. Right. The common day that we all should take apart and rest. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Yes. May I say it like that? Amen. I'm getting under my skin here. Mm-hmm. Right? God would have us to say, this is the way that the Bible reads. Okay, honey, He's I'm sorry. Go ahead. yesterday, today, and okay. forever. It doesn't change. Woo! Somebody said it for another hour. I'm That's ready. Right. I'll tell you what. Well, we, we <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I think the most important thing is, brothers and sisters, we need to be studying more. Amen. We need to be praying more. We have to prepare. And the... I mentioned in the beginning, have you felt the heart surgery? Oh, we wow. need heart surgery. We need God's grace. There is a time of trouble that is coming on this world like we've yeah. never, Thank ever you. experienced yes, before. Yes, yes. You think it's bad? I used to, I couldn't even read years ago the yeah. books on the Waldensians. And it's going to be worse than that. How is that possible? But you really? cannot go through that without God. That's right. Without God. Yeah. We've been warned. It's going to happen. It may 
happen this next year. It may not happen, but it will happen, and it will happen yeah, yeah. soon. We're told over and over, right? Yes. And we look at God has been shining light, right, so that we know what is to take place. Now, well, I wonder, is it not? Well, so we know, and the people need to know, and they That's need right. to be warned. Yes. May God help us to see the importance of it, honey. Yes. You want to pray for Let's us? Pray. We need to close. Let's pray. Okay. We will. Amen. Mighty God in heaven, once again, as we mentioned here just briefly, mm. Lord, we need your grace. Oh my. We need your grace. We need to be hid yes. in Christ. Yeah, no. Father, please help us. There's so much to do, so many things that need to be worked out in our lives. Yes. And we ask you now to be first and foremost in leading out in this area in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 God bless each one. Remember, right? The end is near. Jesus is soon to come. Main thing through all this is just information. Be ready in such an hour as you think not. Son of man coming. God bless you.